Today I'm gathering Arnica. It is a healing flower and grows wild in the forest of my home. This year I found a lot of it in an area that succumbed to fires not long ago, and it reminds me that no matter how bad things get, even watching an entire forest burn down, if you wait long enough and have faith, life will begin again. There are so many bees and birds everywhere. It is such a chorus of noise, so you may not be able to hear me at all, but I just wanted to share this moment with you because this field of Arnica is so abundant. It makes me happier just to be here. I don't have to do anything but just be. And the vibrancy of the color just puts me in a better mood. It occurred to me that I think that is one of the most meaningful and fulfilling parts about simple living. And it is about repetition and embracing the rhythms of the seasons. And every late spring, I gather Arnica and I do something with it to show you that I, I think that if there's one thing I connect to the true joy of simple living, it is embracing those cycles of nature and those seasons and the beauty of simplicity and repetition. So I'm gonna collect some Arnica again. I hope you as well can enjoy the cyclical nature of the seasons in your own life and enjoy those daily rhythms and predictable practices. All right, let's get some flowers, Betty. As many of you know, I had a rather alternative upbringing and grew up mostly without using social media. It was only now as an adult that I use it regularly. I love to keep track of other artists and book lovers. It makes my life better, especially as I live in a small rural community and don't always find people locally who share my interests. The online space can be wonderful, but also sometimes rather cynical, with normalized doom scrolling and the constant critique of others as seemingly entertainment. This got me thinking about how easy it is to surround yourself with negative thoughts and perspectives on the daily in our real lives, and how this practice is deeply unhealthy in my personal case. I had certain life experiences myself that left me quite distrustful and negative, I held on to pent-up anger, unsure what to do with it, and therefore projected it onto others, the society at large, and had a quite dismal outlook in regards to the future. Later in this video, I will go into this more, and you may be surprised. I think my negativity was one of the reasons I was attracted to simple, slow living, because the era of mindful quietness I entered changed things for me. It isn't the answer for everyone, we're all different, but it worked for me and made me realize that the cynical and jaded daily mindset only contributed to a feeling of burnout and left me uninspired to be a force for good and do something meaningful with my life. No doubt, it is healthy for us to share our feelings when we feel frustrated or despairing. 
and talk about injustices and individuals making poor decisions. I do this as well, but I can't bring myself to express them by looking down on others and the world in general. I like to use that energy instead to do acts of kindness, even if it's in small ways. I attempt to find joy despite the darkness, with hope in the power of goodness, and that there's a whole lot of goodness in the world, as well as ugliness. Seeing both does not make the bad any less real, but it reminds us that there are many who are fighting for change and spreading love along the way, and their efforts are valid and beautiful, and should make the news more often in my personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong and my perspective seems silly to you, but I do know that I'd much rather spend my life trying to make the world a better place and choose friendships with people who believe it's possible than giving up before I even try. I have been working on this painting for several days now and I was taking inspiration from all the wild herbs and edibles that are either medicinal or that you can consume them. There are so many incredible flowers and herbs in this area and so I wanted to put them together in one entire art piece. So far I have put veg, mint, purple sage, blueberry, fireweed, tansy, burdock, chicory, yarrow, rosemary, thyme, wild strawberry, violets, dandelions, and several others. It is certainly featuring a lot of very special herbs and flowers. I think one of my favorites is chicory because I've grown it before and I just really love the color. Anyway, you can see where my creativity has led me this week. It has definitely been inspired by all the beautiful flowers. My hope is by the time this video is up, this will be a new original art piece in my Etsy shop. I hope, I also hope to be selling some original paintings and some large prints and posters. So hopefully all that will be coming soon. As you can see, I'm spending a lot of time on my porch and I know that that does mean that the audio is not quite as crisp as it usually is indoors. However, I was hoping that you would appreciate enjoying the springtime with me and all the nature sounds. I was listening to this podcast that was interviewing an actor who many of you probably know, Rain Wilson, and he was talking about his experience with feeling quite cynical and negative at certain points in his life and how he worked through some of those emotions. And there was one point in the podcast where I'm just going to have to leave a link down to it below because uh, what he says just rang so true for me. He was warned by a wise man not to be cynical because if he gave in to too much negativity and felt like he didn't have a sense of agency in his life and in the world, he would never help make the world a better place. I know I had some experiences in my life that made it very hard for me to see things through a positive viewpoint for many, many years. I believe I had a lot of anger pent up in myself and I didn't really know what to do with that anger and so I would just project it onto others and just feeling quite dismal. <laughs> it is interesting though to look back at my younger self, someone who was quite cynical, someone who was in college studying a lot of philosophy, reading a lot of books with very upsetting themes <laughs> and it was hard not to feel that way but I have to admit I created a bit of a habit of that overwhelming daily negativity and I surrounded myself with people that kind of shared that perspective on life. But I will be brutally honest with you and I, at one point, I felt a lot of shame in admitting this, um, but I think I liked being cynical and negative. I think it gave me this very immature, very immature sense of superiority over others that I could just judge people on the smallest things without taking any substantial amount of time for self-reflection and realizing that my own beliefs and mindsets could be quite narrow-minded and quite judgmental and stubborn in my ways and I think it's good to have convictions and go good to have noble convictions it's important 
But for me, my practice of conviction was not being truly open to listen and understand other viewpoints. And even when I disagreed, I didn't try to practice compassion and kindness. And I didn't try to reflect on my own more narrow-minded perspectives. And I appreciate that that is very different now in my life. <laughs> and I am a lot more willing to see others' perspectives. I don't need to agree with them, but I can much easier understand where they're coming from and respect them. It makes it a lot easier to love people openly. And I find it, it makes it easier to love myself because if I am kind to others, even when they make mistakes or they have perspectives I don't agree with, I can be more kind to myself when I realize my own flaws. As you can tell, I am admitting, you know, a really huge character flaw I had years ago. Um, and that was um, something that I was ashamed of for so long after I kind of realized that it was not serving me in any positive way. However, I am sharing it because obviously I am not perfect, I am far from it, and I hope that it can inspire all of you to be kinder to yourselves as well. I think when we choose humility, true humility, you know, isn't being hard on yourself, it's accepting that these things happen and this is the way you grow and you evolve. We have some very, very, very exciting new news in the Cottage Fairy household. We have a new friend in our lives. Her name is Luna and she is so soft. She is as soft as a piece of high quality velvet and she is so sweet and certainly the gentlest bunny I've ever had. I was having a few very difficult days and she helped me through it and she is just a little angel so I'm very excited to introduce her to all of you she is a sweetheart I'm sending all of you my love thank you so much for spending this beautiful day with me and I appreciate all the support of my work as an artist it makes this channel happen and I couldn't do it without that so thank you so much again I'm sending you a well wishes for a wonderful week and I will see you very soon